Now, also another hot button issue I need yeah. to ask you about is you, you talk on the premiere that you and Jamal broke up and yeah. you kind of blamed it on COVID a little bit. Uh -huh. And I have to think that Monique's binder uh -huh. had to play into this a little bit. Well, I didn't blame it on COVID. I said what it was was we can't really see each other. Okay. But the binder and that whole situation. The story of Pastor Jamal Bryant certainly paints a controversial picture. His life and career have been marked by significant achievements and equally significant scandals, particularly regarding his personal conduct and relationships. Jamal Bryant, born May 21, 1971, son of a preacher, struggled academically, dropped out of high school, eventually pursued higher education with the help of Bishop Eddie Long, founded Empowerment Temple AIM Church in Baltimore in 2000. Known for incorporating contemporary issues and hip-hop culture into his sermons, appealing to a younger audience, gained a large following, and became a prominent figure in the African-American religious community. You've been very open over yes. the years about yes. past infidelity. Yes. And in how you grew from that. Yes. What do you make of some people out there who will look at this decision to bring you in as senior pastor as mm -hmm new birth trading, one controversy yeah. for possibly another. No, I think that uh, it's right on uh, target to be a match made in heaven. Uh, who else could help lead a church through scars and pain if you've never done so yourself? There's a, a complete distinction between apathy and empathy. You have to live through some things in order to address it and meet it. Multiple instances of infidelity resulting in children with different women, divorced from Giselle Bryant due to infidelity. The relationship remained tumultuous, rumors and allegations of inappropriate relationships with congregation members. Accused of fathering a child with a 17-year-old, though he denied the claims. Linked with Reteb Singer Tweet, a relationship that ended amidst controversy. Faced an IRS tax lien for $800,000 in unpaid taxes, spanning multiple years, the unpaid taxes were reported for the years 2008, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2014, 2015, 2015, 2016, and 2018. This significant financial issue added to the controversies surrounding his personal and professional life, raising further questions about his management and accountability as a church leader. Proposed unconventional ideas like launching a cannabis business to attract new church members and support economic empowerment named Pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, tasked with reviving the congregation and addressing financial debts, criticized for his lifestyle and teachings, some of which contradict traditional biblical interpretations. An impression that you, you can't let things stand. People, people are shocked at the silence of preachers today. Not that preachers aren't preaching, not that preachers aren't talking, not that preachers don't have sermons, because sermons galore. But it's amazing how we manage to just avoid stuff. Find something else to talk about when, when major issues are put before us. I had I alluded to this many times, but I want, I want to show it tonight. Now listen at uh, uh, what was said about the life of our Lord that if this is true, none of us are saved. If what I'm getting ready to show you, if what I'm about to show you, if it's true, we're all going to hell. Right now, hell bound, hell bound. Sitting up in here looking like a, a, a church mother on your way to hell. If what I'm getting ready to show you is true. All that saying that you did tonight, waste of time. If what I'm about to show you is true. Praise the Lord. If it's true, see. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you that 85% um, of Jesus' life, he was out of order. Eighty-five percent of his life, 
he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. For 85% of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. 85% of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. But it did not line up with his divine DNA. For 85% of his life, and he's anointed, he's called, he's chosen, and he's wrong. Bryant's use of hip-hop culture and contemporary issues in his sermons has been both praised and criticized. While it appeals to a younger audience, some traditionalists see it as a dilution of biblical teachings. His suggestion to launch a cannabis business to attract new church members and promote economic empowerment was seen as controversial and not in line with traditional Christian values. Statements such as these hoes ain't loyal during a sermon have been criticized for being disrespectful and unfit for a pastor, reflecting poorly on his understanding and application of biblical principles regarding respect and love for others. Called out by religious writers as a false prophet, yet continues to have a significant following. Critics argue that Bryant's numerous instances of infidelity and fathering children out of wedlock are stark contradictions to the moral standards expected of a religious leader. Some of Bryant's sermons and public statements, such as derogatory comments about women and the proposal to incorporate cannabis business within the church, have been viewed as inconsistent with traditional Christian values. That's true. We're lost. Matter of fact, let's all go eat, drink, and be merry. Go down to the store and get, get, a, get, a, get a cold one. Get a six-pack and just drink it. Because if Jesus was wrong, for 85% of his life, if Jesus was out the will of the Lord, then uh, we're, de we're done. Now, I would like to think, I don't know if it's true or not, but I would like to think, and I could be wrong, I hope that I'm not. I hope I've done a good enough job up until now. I would like to think that if I said something like that here, that you would hesitate at least to see what the punchline is because he's joking he's making a point he's headed somewhere if there is no correction in that I would like to think that would have been your last day here well let me tell you the difference between me and that host pastor uh, that was sitting there Speechless. What you say in a situation like that is, hey man, you need to fix that. From, the, from your seat. Hey, dog. You need to fix that. And you're standing up because you get ready to tell your sound man to cut the mic. And if you don't, he's going to be cut because you cannot let that stand. You cannot let that go unaddressed. That's not true. Jesus was perfect. Debate over whether his actions disqualify him from spiritual leadership. The debate continues on how to balance holding leaders accountable for their actions while allowing space for redemption and personal growth. This dynamic plays out publicly, influencing both criticism and support. The balance between extending grace and holding leaders accountable for moral failings. Concerns about the impact of lowering moral standards within the church community. The case of Pastor Jamal Bryant underscores the complexities of religious leadership, the challenges of maintaining personal integrity, and the consequences of public scrutiny. While he has made significant contributions to his community, his personal failings have sparked ongoing debate about the qualifications and conduct of those in spiritual authority.